All right. Good morning, everyone. How is everybody doing? Doing great. great. How are you? Good, 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 good. So first, I want to thank everyone for tuning in to our Delta's Worker Unite podcast for today. I'm your host, Amanda goodman of Minneapolis Ramp, Delta Airlines employee. Alongside me today is five other Delta Airlines working system-wide. Also, we have a very special guest on today that I'm so honored to have him with us. General Vice President of the IAM Airlines Territory, Brother Richie Johnson, who will be answering five questions for the podcast today for Delta's workers uh, answering questions. First, I would like for everyone to introduce yourself and tell our listening viewers your name and what stations you're from. Pat, Brother Pat, could you start us off? Sure. Uh, Pat Gores and I work in uh, Minneapolis. All right. Brother Earl. Earl Hunt, Philadelphia, 27-year employee, Northwest slash Delta, on the ramp. All right, Brother Andy. Hi, everybody. Andy Hamilton, uh, Detroit. All right, Brother Gamali. Gamali Apia, Atlanta, Georgia. And my brother, Richie. <laughs> Richie Johnson, General Vice President, Air Transport of the IAM. I'm also a 35-year airline employee. All righty. Thank you, everyone, for those great introductions. So let's dive right in. OK, so our first question for today is, uh, Brother Richie, is Delta has been saying that even if we vote a union in, it could be three to four years before we get a contract. Is that true? You know, this is a, another perfect example of De Delta telling a half truth or not the complete story, uh, certainly under the Railway Labor Act. Uh, the process is a little bit more difficult and can be timely. Um, but since we took over leadership of this territory two and a half years ago, we've made it a priority to get our contracts negotiated in a much more timely manner, using the Railway Labor Act to our benefit instead of to our detriment. Um, and so the result of that has been that we've we've gotten contracts in a year, less than a year, and in some cases, six weeks. Uh, I don't think we're in a place in the airline industry any longer where it should take three or four years to negotiate contracts. And we as the IM, and certainly in my territory, have made it a priority to say we're not going to be part of the stumbling block. The only way there's a stumbling block and the only way there'd be a problem that would take three to four years is if Delta refused to negotiate with us. Can you see that being possible with Delta? Or you think that we can get this done within that three to four years before that? Well, I mean, I would say that, you know, Delta uh, has not had that type of problem negotiating uh, with the pilots. Uh, so they have had a relationship with uh, another labor organization. Uh, they take very good care of them. Um, uh, although their contracts can be difficult to negotiate, uh, they've been able to get them in a timely manner and uh, and get contracts that, you know, uh, um, reward their pilots uh, as the best in the industry. All righty. Thank you, Brother Richie, for that answer. So next we'll have up from Detroit, Brother Andy. Could you go ahead and ask Brother Richie your question, please? Yeah, I want to tag off that. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about the contracts you guys have settled. I am with uh, Southwest United, Alaska, and Hawaiian recently. You guys have been pretty busy. <laughs> yeah, we've been very busy. Um, and again, we've, we've, we've made it a priority to say, look, it's time for us to keep building upon one another. And so that's exactly what we did, making each one of those groups uh, industry leading at the time of our negotiations. Uh, Hawaiian uh, got record increases in their, but we got them record increases in their pay and their job security language, 10 to 40% increases in their pay. Uh, we went to Alaska Airlines and for the first time in their history of that airline, they were paid and compensated to be the highest uh, play, paid employees for the classifications we represent at Alaska Airlines. And we did the same thing at Southwest and at United, every time elevating to the next level and building upon the contracts that we've negotiated um, for the for specifically for the classification of ramp. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, I'm so excited for these questions coming up with these kind of answers we're getting. Well, so let me, thank let me, you for that. Man, I, let me just say one more thing is uh, Absolutely. To, to, that, Absolutely. to that question from Andy. You know, uh, job security language is massive right? Full-time ratios mm -hmm. are massive. Knowing that you have a job that, you know, you could, you can make all the money in the world, but if there's no meat to a contract, 
if it's just a hollow shell, which I believe in a lot of the case with Delta it is, then it doesn't mean much. Uh, you have to have language in there that speaks to, um, you know, your job be- staying a job for you. And you have to have language that speaks to schedules and to shifts and to all the other pieces that work rules uh, and quality of life issues that come with a collective bargaining agreement. And, you know, we did some things uh, clearly in the early 2000s. The airlines went through a very difficult time. Right. Um, and there was some some stuff that got went into contracts through bankruptcy that were hard pills to swallow. And in our two and a half years at record pace, we've been able to erase that, get the job security language back in those contracts and make those people the highest paid, well, most well compensated, for the type of work that they do. Wow. Thank you, Brother Richie. Thank you for adding that on. So as we go forward, uh, next up, we'll have Brother Pat Gores from Minneapolis. Could you go ahead and share with Brother Richie your question, please? Absolutely. So hearing some of those details from those contracts, it sounds like you're saying uh, that Delta does not have industry leading wages or benefits. Well, I mean, that it's not debatable. They do not. Um, I mean, the, the contracts are very black and white and no one should take my word for it or Delta's word for it. You can literally go on to our, on any one of our web pages. Uh, you can go to dis- I am district 141 or I am district 142. And you can look at those contracts for yourself. You can see exactly where they're, what their packages are. Um, and I can tell you right now, D- Delta does a very good job of staying competitive in their wages, competitive, um, Every one of those contracts that, you, that we described, whether it's Alaska, Southwest, United, those the last three contracts we negotiated all went beyond Delta. Uh, and if you look at the benefit package, it's not even comparable. Not their medical, uh, you know, not certainly not uh, the majority of their package and certainly not their work rules or the quality of life issues. Well, thank you, Brother Richie. That's huge because quality of life right now is everything. And we definitely need a better quality of life and uh, some better benefits and some wages. So thank you for answering that question for us. Next we have up is Brother Earl Hunt from Philly. Brother Earl, would you like to proceed with your question, please? Yes, it has been a lot of talks in Philly um, about profit sharing and flight benefits. As far as when the negotiators come, come about, we're going to lose that. Can you please elaborate on that? Absolutely. I mean... This isn't even a half truth. This is just a flat out lie. I mean, it's a ridiculous statement if anyone from Delta Airlines is telling people they're going to lose their profit sharing or their flight benefits. Literally, every one of those airlines we described has flight benefits and profit sharing, whether it's our rep- people we represented, American Airlines or United or Southwest or Hawaiian or Alaskan. All of them have flight benefits. All of them have profit sharing. Go out and read the contracts. Even Del- mm-hmm. Delta's saying it because they're hoping you don't. They're saying, do the homework, right? Do the homework. Go and read the contracts. Read it letter for letter, language for language. It will be a no-brainer. It will be mm-hmm. instantaneously be signing a card saying, I can't wait to vote. Wonderful, wonderful. Well explained, well explained. Anything else you want to elaborate on that or we'll move on to the next question, Brother Richie? No, let's move on. Let's keep let's it going. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So last but not least, our fifth question is coming from the ATL, Brother Gomley Appeal. So would you like to go ahead and ask your question, Brother Gomley? Yes, uh, Mr. Richie Johnson. I like I like what you said. When when uh, people look at the contract, it'll be a no brainer. Sign an A card authorization. So for a ramp agent that's in Atlanta or anywhere around the system. What would it look like for us to um, actually get a union representation? Well, I mean, look, there's a whole process, right? And we got to get we got to get to that day. We got to get to that. uh, We got to get the card signed uh, and we got to get to a vote. And, you know, I feel really strongly based on the feedback that we get from the people we are able to talk to that when we get to a vote, we will be successful. Uh, We got to get to that day. And. Uh, let me just uh, let me just say this. Look, we are 100 percent fully committed to this process. We have teams across the country that are working with our local committees and our in-house committees everywhere. Uh, we're going to go beyond that. You know, we have our territories geographically that are now stepping up that are going to help us. It is our intent. And I'll let you all know and you can let your folks know. And Delta can tell them as well. 
we will be knocking at a door near you soon. Because what we're finding is that when we talk to people, when people have an opportunity to ask us their questions in person, when we can show them the documentation, they sign a card at a very, very high rate. Uh, our, our, the problem is when you're looking at 18,000 people, sometimes it's difficult to get to them. And I know that it isn't you know, ideal that someone knocks at your door. And if there was another way that we could do it, that we could get on the property, Delta wants to invite us on the property, we won't knock on your door. There you go, Delta Airlines. You want to get away from people knocking on the door? Set us up with a room on your properties, and we'd be happy to do it right there. And then nobody has to worry about somebody coming and knocking at their door. But the truth is, is they do everything to deter people from talking to the union, and there's a reason. The reason is that when they talk to us and they get the information, they want to sign a car, and they want to have an election. And it's about dollars and cents, people, your dollars and cents. It's about them not putting in your pocket what they want to put in their own pocket. And they got plenty of it to put in your pocket. So, you know, they don't want you to talk to us, but we're going to do that. We're coming. We're going to be, we are fully engaged in this. We're out. So anybody that says we can't get there, we can't win, they're lying to you. Those are people that don't want you to win. Those are people that are trying to deter you from your mission. And I'm telling you, when we knock and we talk and we touch and we get in contact with people, they want to be a part of this movement. And that's our road to victory. Now, I think we can get there in a very short period of time. Um, I have commitments from all kinds of folks, whether it's within our own organization. Uh, our own team will have 20 to 30 teams that will be going around the country. Outside of that, the AFL-CIO has committed to helping us in it. Uh, other territories, other organizations, uh, local organizations. We are engaging communities. We are engaging everyone and anyone, and there's a lot of people that want to see this happen because it's in the best interest of working people. It's in the best interest of the people that work for uh, Delta Airlines, and it's in the best interest of communities everywhere. So uh, lots of people will be engaged. You'll see a full tilt um, campaign going forward. We are not going anywhere. This is not a sprint. It's a marathon, and we are fully committed to it, and we will be in it to the end. Wonderful, wonderful. Was that all, Brother Gamaly? Yeah, that was that was great. Okay, okay. But I did want to ask you, Brother Richie, one thing that's been really high, and I know we've said this is and it's becoming really redundant, but I wanted to you to kind of like shed some light on because people think that they would lose their profit sharing. People think that they would lose their travel. Can we just talk a little bit about that? That is not what would happen if we should win an election. So I mean, can you just talk a little bit about that for us, please? Yeah, I mean, look, you know, we talked it relatively at length, but let me just give you an example of Delta Airlines. How are the pilots doing with their profit sharing? I don't know. They got a lay. They got a union. How are they doing with their travel benefit? I think they're doing okay. Uh, if you can find me, if Delta Airlines can find me an airline that we represent that doesn't have their flight benefits, if they can find me a major carrier that we represent that they don't have profit sharing, I challenge you. Here's your Pepsi challenge, Delta Airlines. Go right <laughs> at it. Bring it on. <laughs> Because I'll tell you what, you won't find it. It doesn't exist. And Brother Richie, I was going to ask you, did you have any wrap-up? It seems like you just wrapped it up for us in an ex ex excellent way. So as we come to an end, I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in on today's podcast. And we'll see you next time. And to Delta workers out there, I just want to highly encourage you to keep fighting a good fight. And let's get to a vote. So thanks for everyone for being on the podcast today. Thank you so much. All right? Thank you for hosting, Amanda. All right. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you, you next know. time. Okay. Thank bye. You. Bye.